high holidays yet though <laughs> because there is coming up Sukkot I, I, we, I believe we're now in the time of the year where it's like um, what day is it because you have you have the high the holidays you have okay it was a little bit easier this year Yom Kippur wasn't on Shabbat but the Sukkot starts on Wednesday night right and then it's Thursday and then it's Friday and then it's Shabbat again and it's it's like what day are we because it's it's Monday but it's also two days before a three-day um, Chag, so it's, it's, it's maybe a Wednesday. But I'm really excited to, to learn a little bit about Sukkot because it's, it's um, kind of, I think, the, a little bit of a forgotten holiday in, in Judaism because you have Rosh Hashanah and you have Yom Kippur and they're kind of intense. And then a lot of Jews, if I, if I can be honest, I think check out after Yom Kippur, right? So firstly, kudos to all of you for still being like, nope, it's Monday morning straight after Yom Kippur, and we're 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 on it, we're still on it. And um, but Sukkot is actually a very very beautiful chag. Now, what's very interesting is that in 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 Jewish law, there is a mitzvah to be happy on every one of the different Jewish festivals. Interestingly, there's um um. One of the questions I want to throw out is, is how can we be commanded to be, be happy? How can we com be commanded to have an emotion? Any, any thoughts on that? You know, like when, when you're in, I don't know if this happens to anyone else, right? When you're a little bit irritated and someone tells you to calm down, right? <laughs> on, a scale of, on a scale of one to ten, how, how effective is that? That's a zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, negative five, right? It, it doesn't work. So how can, how can God tell us, be happy? Just because Sukkot is coming up, be happy. Maybe it's just a reminder that we should, like it's our North Star. I mean, That's what we should aim towards. Yeah, you can't make anybody be anything. You have True. eight kids, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you fake it, you fake it, it becomes a reality. So you act happy even if you aren't, and you will become happy. Okay. So I think they it. choose to be happy. Even if, like, like I don't think happy and sad are opposites, you know? Like, I think you can be happy yeah. inside or about something even if things aren't going your way. So you make a choice. Right. And, and it's interesting that you say that because one of the things I want to look into in, in, in this class is, is what, what, where does happiness sort of come from? And it's interesting that you're saying that you don't think happiness comes is is necessarily the opposite of of sadness. And I've got a story to to tell you that will back you up. So, but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll hold on to that story for a second. But what's it was actually interesting is that while every and Maimonides talks about how we should be happy, and he 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 says that what that means is that for for men traditionally they should have meat and wine over the festivals because that can lead to happiness and for women it's to to buy new something new for the hug whether it's jewelry or shoes or yes so there's actually a mitzvah <laughs> what was the man say that again buy something um, um meat, meat and, wine. and wine and for kids it's candy right sweet treats <laughs> Right. So, by the way, if there's anything you take away from this class, then yeah, it's a mitzvah to go out and buy something new before the chag. Right. Whether it's a piece of jewelry, whether it's a, a pair of shoes. I think I think the Talmud talks about a pair of shoes because that was probably like a big treat. I mean, it's still a treat nowadays, right? A pair of shoes or or it's just something new to wear for the um, chag. Now. What's interesting about Sukkot over and above the other holidays is that the I, the mitzvah of being happy is brought up three times when it comes to Sukkot. Now, what is the what what is the Chag of Sukkot, right? What what's the mitzvahs of of the Chag of Sukkot? Sit in the sukkah. Right. So, so leave your comfortable house at this time of year where we're in the middle of the change of season. So it's not particularly hot. It's not. It's, it can get really cold out there. I think Denver's Denver is is um, your luckier right because the weather usually is decent we we lived in calgary one year 
And I remember the our the honey freezing in the sukkah. We left the honey overnight or something, and it actually froze because it was like so cold. And at the end of Sukkot, it was always like we got to get the sukkah down now because if we don't get the sukkah the sukkah down now, it's going to get snowed on, and then we're done for like six months, right? So so it was always that race to do it. Right? There are some places where it's freezing and it's it's not a comfortable. So here we have this mitzvah to be happy. And how and, and what is the what, what is the mitzvah of the Chag? So one of the mitzvahs is to go leave your comfortable home, sit in this temporary dwelling. Last yesterday we were putting up our sukkah and my kids were complaining like already they're starting to complain. It's so narrow and squishy in the sukkah and I'm like, yeah, it is. Like it's it's a sukkah, right? We don't have we don't have a built-in sukkah. It's not the same, you know, it, it is, it's not going to be as comfortable as your home. You're cold, even if you get a he heater, it's not quite the same. So the two questions that I want to kind of look at is, is number one, how can we be commanded to have an emotion, which we have some ideas that we, we, we're given. And the second one is why specifically, like, if this is a festival about, you know, letting go of the materialistic and, and the, you know, like leaving the sukkah fits m close more with Yom Kippur, right? Like it's about leaving the materialistic, but this is a, a festival where we're supposed to be joyous. And this is the one where we leave our ha a comfortable house. So what do you think? Why, why, why w w won't it detract from our joy, from our happiness if we're not comfortable? Sort of like fasting and Yom Kippur. Yes. Okay, it's not quite as bad. <laughs> <laughs> but we were just talking about that in Rabbi Liebman's class, where he was saying it's supposed to be like joyful, but why are we like suffering physically all day? Because we know we're going to eat. It's like the appetizer. You get to go back to your house. You know you have a house. So that's good. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and and it makes a lot of sense. The question that I have on that is that, so so let the jo mitzvah of joy be once we get back into our house, and now we're like now we appreciate it. We've been out in the cold or the uncomfortable weather or the or the squishy squishiness for a week. Now we get back into our house. The mitzvah of joy should be afterwards. Yes, Nachama. It's also part of the holiday to help us to be close to Hashem. Okay, so you're saying that there's something, um, um, and, and, and in fact, we're, um, we're told that, yes, that that's the crux of the answer, is that how can we be commanded to be, have an emotion? We can, because we actually have a lot more control of our emotions than we, than we recognize, right? As I think a few of you said, you know, we can do actions that influence our, our um, emotions. We can think things that influence our emotions as well. It's, it's, yes, we have feelings, but we also have a lot of um, control over the things we, we do or the actions that we take or, or the, the thoughts we think that will then influence our, our behavior, which, by the way, is... is um, a lot of what is behind therapy, right? Um, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, is it's like the thoughts we think and the actions we take influence our behaviors, which also then influence it, like it's that, that loop. And when we understand what's behind the mitzvahs of Sukkot, right? The sit, going out to the sukkah and sitting in the sukkah, the taking of the four species then when a person has an understanding of it that will naturally bring us to more joy so let's kind of try and understand it because who doesn't want more joy in their life right <laughs> it, yes you have a question or well, a thought or a comment question, a comment yeah i know that i'm very sensitive to environment and, and the do, do you mind to hold on just a second i'm just going to close the door so we don't get um, okay. do you want to close that one so we don't get distracted from the... thank you so much yes please go okay i'm very sensitive to feelings i can feel energies whether it's good whether it's bad i once walked through something where i felt spirits yeah. coming and in the atmosphere i mean it was like you feel cold fuzzies, I don't know if there was a kid's book about cold fuzzies. 
and I know what they're talking about. But when I sit in the sukkah on just building it and having it there before sukkah, there's nothing in there or unordinary. But when it, sukkahs come, I just, the whole inside of the sukkah changes for me. It's like Hashem is saying, I'm there. Beautiful. And if everybody goes into their sukkah during Sukkot and just sits there comfortably, quietly, you can feel Hashem's presence. It's like He hooks into everybody's Sukkot, Sukkah, during Sukkot. And as soon as Sukkot is over, there's nothing in the Sukkot. Hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you and so much for especially, sharing that. Especially, yeah. one more point. Yeah, please. It's especially strong on um, Shabbos. Take a book, Jewish book, and sit there and read and see what you feel. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, okay, so let's try and understand what what that energy is, right, that, we, that we're talking about. So there's three festivals that are connected to the agricultural year. Right. There's Chag HaKotzer, which is um, Pesach, Passover, which is comes at the time of the cutting of the wheat. Right. Then you have the Chag HaBikurim, which is when we took, this is Shavuot, where we took the first fruit to the temple. So basically what that happens at is, is the fruits are starting to grow. The first fruits are starting to grow and there's a mitzvah to take the first one of the first fruits, so you can take as much as or as little as we wanted in the time of the temple and take it up as a recognition that we will remind ourselves that, yes, I've put in all the work and God has blessed me with this fruit. Then there's a third um, festival, which is Sukkot, which happens at the end of the harvest season. Right. So we've gone through the whole agricultural year. We've planted, we've cut the beginning, we've everything's grown, we've collected it all. Now, obviously, which one of those three brings us the most joy? Passover. <clears throat> I'm saying of the of the ag agricultural year. Yeah. I know, but I love Passover. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Um, yes, and what, what my, my, point, <laughs> my point was, though, um, that of those, three, not of the three festivals, of those three times of the year, right, when we're cutting of the wheat at the beginning of the, of the, of the planting se series, there's worry, right? What's the crop going to be like? When they're starting to grow, there's a little bit of relief, but there's still that worry of how much is going to grow? Is it going to be enough to support my family, my community? Yeah. And at the end of it, when you've collected all that t um, um, stuff and you bring it in, it's kind of like getting the paycheck. There's a sense of like relief and joy. And what else can it lead to? Yes. Is it when um, you were saying it, what occurred to me is, is like suppose the um, manifestation of the how the Via Hafta says that if you keep these mitzvot, then you will have the rain and the, um, and you will have your harvest. Yeah. Is it like the? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's at the end of the. The I mean, it's yes, it's it's the, we've planted, we've worked hard, and now we collect it all in. And what can that lead to? When, when we're in a place, I, I don't know if anyone has ever been. You know, you get a big bonus, or you get a you you work on a project and you finally complete it, and it mm -hmm. comes to life. What can we feel? Joy. Right. Joy. You feel, and you feel a sense of accomplishment. Accomplishment. And what's what's the risk of that? The what? The risk. Doesn't happen to us, but sometimes it happens to other people. Feeling of that joy? that feeling of, of like joy and accomplishment. I'm so good. Not just I'm so good, but it gets to your head, right? Like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. again, as I said, it doesn't happen to any of us, but sometimes other people, right? Yeah. <laughs> other people, you know, they they accomplish something, and it go and it gets to the head, right? There's you know what that phrase means, right? When when it it's it's yeah. there's it, that self a grand, like self feeling of of like wow, I'm so important, and I'm so and I'm 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 all important. Now, so what's the remedy for that? Sit in the circle. 
One. <laughs> yes, it's the remedy for it. It's, but what does that help us it's with? It's humbling. Like, we don't run the world. Like, yes, we take that joy that we feel. And again, we're supposed to feel joy. It's not that we're supposed to collect all that harvest, bring it into our house and feel like, oh, that was nothing. No, we're supposed to feel joy. We're supposed to enjoy it. And we're supposed to channel that into our relationship with God. All right. That's why we kind of, you know, what, what, um, um, we just heard is that you, you, you take it into the sukkah and the sukkah is not just we leave our house and, and we're, um, we're out. It's a dwelling place of God. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's that, there's, there's this two things that's happening. There's the physical far harvest. Now, none of us are farmers, are we? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Although, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit, right? Might do gardening. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're not, some of us may have little bit things, but, mm -hmm. but there's also mm -hmm. a spiritual harvest that's going mm -hmm. on here. What do I mean by that? Yes, Nechama. I was going to say that part of it is one thing that we're, this time of year, we know we have the rest, we have um, the month of Elul, where we're getting ready for Rosh Hashanah, preparing ourselves, doing Teshuvah and all that. And then we have Rosh Hashanah, where the day where we're being judged, and it's a scary time, or, you know, literally. Mm -hmm. And then we have a Teshuvah, um, a Teshuvah, the 10 days. And then we're still, like, prepping ourselves mm -hmm. and working. Mm -hmm. And then Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, it's like we're, we're literally... Please. Asking God to forgive us and everything. And then it's like, you know, that that big crescendo. And then so this is where we, it culminates everything, all the spiritual that we've gone through. And then there's like this joy, like, for celebrating God. Yes, thank you. And, and I think, um, um, to, to, yes, to summarize what you just told us beautifully is that there's also, just like it's a phys time of physical harvest, there's a time of spiritual harvest. We've put in the effort, we all have, right? Showing up, you know, whatever work we did during Elul, the showing up um, um, on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, we went through the services, we went through go getting out of our comfort zone maybe and going to something that we weren't necessarily expecting and 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 pushing ourselves and then what happens generally is that when we when we when we sin which we do throughout the year we create a distance between us and god between us and our higher self between us mm -hmm. and other people and when we go through this process over the high holidays of of cleansing and coming closer to Shuva, that that repair process, we 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 come closer. We're closer to our higher self. We're closer to other people. Hopefully, if we repaired relationships, we're we're closer to God through the process that we went. And now we come into the sukkah where God tells us, "Yeah, leave your home, leave the comfort of your home, and go into something that's a little bit less comfortable, but where I'm gonna be with you." right mm -hmm. i'm going to be with you and together we're influenced by our our surroundings we're influenced by the people by, by the by our surroundings right we, um for anyone that has my book out we we, we the, it's a theme that comes up quite often in Pirkavot and, and in the book that we are influenced by the people that we are around mm -hmm. and we're similarly influenced by the energy we're around so when we go into the sukkah we we're influenced by that energy and we recognize that, as I think um, Deborah kind of said, is, is that happiness is not necessarily the opposite of comfort. It's not, sorry, it's not the same as comfort. It's not necessarily the opposite of sadness. In fact, there's a story told of the Chazon, Chazon Ish, who was a rabbi who went through the Holocaust. And he said, he, he's quoted as saying that for someone who knows the truth, there's no such thing as sadness. Now, I think what's so phenomenal about this quote is that this was said by someone who went through the Holocaust. I can't say that. I can't say for someone who knows the truth, there's no such thing as sadness because I haven't been through something as horrific as that. But he went through something as horrific as that. And he says, for someone who knows the truth, there's no such thing as sadness. And I think if anyone has ever kind of been to a gym, 
right? You'll go and you'll imagine an alien lands on Earth and you t and they and they walk past the gym and they see they see some they, they they see through the glass door and they see someone who's sweating, right? Sweat dripping down their face and lifting weights. They would think, oh my goodness, this person is being tortured, right? And they would if you would tell them, hold on a second. Not only is this person not being tortured, they're doing it by their choice, free choice, and they're paying for the privilege, <laughs> right? And is the person is the person who's sweating, tears, you know, sweat dripping down his face? Are they miserable? No. No, because they, are they comfortable? No. no, absolutely not. Because comfort is not the same as happiness. We often think that comfort is the same as happiness. Comfort is not the same as happiness. So what does happiness come from? Because it's the person who is in the gym sweating. Are they happy at that point? Not particularly. They could be. They could be. After the workout. And even during the workout, they could, they could be happy. What, where does that sense of happiness come from? Inside. It com comes from inside the heart. It comes from inside the heart, and where does it come from? Just knowing that there's a benefit to it, and it's for the mm -hmm. good. From the meaning, right, that they get from it, right? So comfort is not necessarily happiness, but meaning, living a meaningful life, is what gives us a sense of contentment, a sense of joy, a sense of inner happiness. And, and that happiness can look like tears and sweat, and, and, and difficulties. It's not necessarily a, a contradiction. And where does the sense of meaning come from? Any idea where, where a sense of meaning comes from? And we can go back to the analogy of the person in the gym. How could it be that the person is sweating and feels that there's, feels a sense of meaning? They have something in mind that they're working towards. They have something that they know that they're working towards. They know that the pain is uh -huh. gain. Pain <laughs> is gain and pain is? The pain is worth it. The it's, pain is worth it. And what else is the pain? It's a choice. It's, it's a choice. A choice. Mm -hmm. And it's temporary, right? Yep. They know that I'll be in the gym and I'll, I, I will, I, I'll, I'll work out for a half an hour or however long it is. And then I will be out of the gym and the, the gain is worth the temporary pain. And it's the same thing for us when we recognize and realize that, and, and again, if this is a new concept for you, I'm happy to dis, um, discuss afterwards, that this world is a temporary world and mm -hmm. our soul lives on. And the gains that we get go through, through the pain or the, or, or the work that we put in this world is eternal. That gives us meaning. And that meaning can bring us joy and happiness. Yes, were you were you going to say something, Nakama? Yeah, two things. One, yeah. on the time of year when we talk about stuff, guys, there's a, there's a phrase that we say it a lot about. You'll hear people singing it. You'll hear people saying it. It's also in the Torah. Um, besamata bechagacha. Um, besamata means joy. I don't know what bechagacha means off my head. Chagecha um, means your festival. Thank you, your festival. Um, so that's another thing that's also a big theme for this holiday that um, is that joy in, in your festival, like the joy festival. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing that we also say. Um, I was going to say something else, but I can't remember. Okay, when, 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 you, when you remember. Yes. Okay, so let's, let's kind of sum up what we've said so far, and then, and then we're going um, to um, go forward, right? We started with two questions. How can we be commanded to have an emotion? And wouldn't go, leaving the comfort of our home um, detract from the joy? So the first reason is we, we looked at you can be commanded for an emotion because while you're not directly... We, we could do things and understand things that influence our emotions, right? And when we understand the beauty, the mm -hmm. meaning, the depth behind the mitzvot of Sukkot, that in itself will bring us joy. And there's also the idea that we could do sit different things, that will, physical things, that will bring us, that will influence our emotions. But we, and we said that there are three, there, there are three sort of festivals around 
the harvest season. Sukkot is the one that we celebrate when the harvest is over, right? We've, we've done the work, we're now gathered in and we've had, please God, a successful harvest physically and also spiritually, right? Because we've done the work of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which is hard work. And now we're in a place where we've been cleansed, we've been atoned, we're, 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 we're closer, we're closer to our higher self, we're closer to other people because of the repair and the shuva process we went through, we're closer to God because of what, what we went through. And that can sometimes, that sense of joy that comes from accomplishment can sometimes lead us to, to it can lead a person to getting to it going to the person's head, which we don't want. So what do we do? What's the antidote to that? The antidote to that is to take that joy and channel it into our relationship with God, which is what the mitzvah of Sukkot is telling us. It's telling us, God is telling us, you did all this work, you've collected this harvest. Now what I want you to do is I want you to leave the comfort of your home Go into a temporary dwelling, and I want you to spend seven days, eight days out. Um, um, it's eight days or nine days outside of Israel, in, in, as a festival together with me. I want you to spend that time together with me, that energy, because we're influenced by the energy that we surround ourselves. So we want to bring more of that godliness into our life and into the year. Now, there's another deeper meaning as well that come that comes from it. Is that a lot of times, you know, we, we, we feel fear, right? We're concerned about what the future's gonna bring or, or something that, that, it, that, that might happen to us. And what, what does Sukkot tell us is it, it, it's, it's, it's this powerful, powerful message that is telling us that leave the comfort of your home, right? What, is that, what does our home signify to us? It's a material security security yeah. material security it's absolutely security the fact that we have if you think about it right walls and a roof that protect us from the elements if we can afford to to, to pay the rent right it's, it's security not yeah. having a home is that sense of of insecurity and we we can feel a lot of anxiety around will i be secure in life in different areas and it's symbolic of the fact that we leave that security right and we recognize that whose security am i tapping into i no longer can rely on the security of my home because i've left it for the week so whose security can i rely on god, god. which god. by the way doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay according to what i want it to mean instead what it means it means that whatever happens i can find meaning in because there's a god that's running my life and there's a God that's, that, that, that I, whose protection I'm under. Because the truth is, as much as we don't want to think about it, the security of our house, is that a real security? No, no. We see it so many times where, God forbid, there's a hurricane or, or you know, there, there's a financial crisis and people lose their homes. It, it's, it's something that we don't want to think about, but it's a very insecure security. Mm -hmm. And instead, we tap into the security that we're really under. And can, does that mean that everything's going to be okay according to what we want it to be? No. no. Mm -hmm. And it means that no matter what happens, we can find meaning in. And that's where the joy comes. It's when we understand that I don't have to be afraid of the environment. I don't have to be afraid of what life is going to throw at me. Because even though it's, it's, even though it's, it might be hard, I can find meaning in it. And by the way, this is what the process of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur um, shows us. Because what does Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur sh um, show us? Let me take a step back for a second and ask you the question. Who runs the world? Rosh Hashanah. God. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Well, God was the one that created the world. But he gave us the opportunity to to do mitzvahs and to do good in this world and to make it a better, a better, a better or a worse world. Absolutely. And it was. We have yeah. free will, but it's also temporary. Oh, beautiful. The whole message of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is that we have free will. Mm -hmm. And and it's not just that, you know, we do things. We, we bring down, we activate energies, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give the example that um, um, Sue gave us, right? There's an energy in the sukkah, 
But we activate that energy by building the sukkah, by going into sukkah, by going into someone else's sukkah, right? We activate those energies. So we're really in control because God says, I created this imperfect world. I created all these imperfect people. And then I'm, I'm inviting you to partner with me to make the world a little bit more perfect. And we choose, we by our choices can activate different different um, energies in this world and we bring down different energies and that's that there's an incredibly empowering thought right to know that yes i don't know what the world what, what life is going to throw at me wow. I, we really don't know we have no no idea and yet no matter what life will throw at us we have control in how we react to it we can find meaning in what in what happens to us and there's one more idea that sukkah shows us that gives us that gives us this sense of joy as well and that is there's an idea there's a custom to that every day it's called the ushpizin mm -hmm. that um um not just the 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 show the ushpizin right but um there's there's this um idea that that every single day there's a different f a visitor that comes. On the first day it's Abraham, the second yeah. day it's Isaac, the third day it's Jacob, right? E each of these biblical personalities come mm -hmm. down into the sukkah. And, and, we, say and a we say a special mm -hmm. prayer. They're kind of like our guest in the sukkah and it's like an energy, right? The energy mm -hmm. that comes down into the sukkah. What's the depth behind that? Is it's teaching us that we as Jews are anchored to a history that's so rich right? We're not here on our own. We're here with, with such deep roots. We have the, you know, the incredible Avraham had this, this um, incredible um, middle, a character trait of kindness. And he yeah. gave it to us. He gave us that potential for kindness. And that's why you see it. You see the kindness that Jews do. Every, every single um, um, one of them has given us, we have this, this roots and this history that's so rich and knowing that we're anchored to something that's larger than us and that we have such deep roots is also something that are, that are, um, um, that, are, that gives us joy. So to sum up, why are we commanded specifically with Sukkot to, to, be joyful. Anyone wants to try and answer the question? Oh. Why specifically? Basically, in a nutshell, it's it to to um step out of our comfort zone and to go into a um hut that we built to be close to Hashem. Yeah. And to also um. Help us elevate our spiritual. Yep, and it's and it's to rec to recognize that happiness, true joy, true inner contentment comes when we recognize that we have uh, we we can live a life full of meaning, and that's what it's telling us is that we might think that happiness comes from comfort, but it's yeah. not true because you can be incredibly comfortable and not happy there and we see it nowadays like so many people who have incredible comfort in their life and they struggle because they don't have that sense of of um of meaning so we leave the comfort behind we go out to remind ourselves that we are here for a higher purpose and that no matter what life throws at us we don't have to live in fear of it because no matter what life throws at us we can find a sense of meaning and joy through that and we're also anchored to a history and a tradition that is so rich. Yeah. Any thoughts, any questions, any comments? Yes, please, no, Cindy. That's, that's very beautiful what you said. It made me think that, um, so life is for, life is fleeting, and we have the contentment piece and the happiness piece, but happiness isn't forever and all the time. It's no. instantaneous or mo moment in, in time, right? So it, it passes, but we can. The contentment part comes in with the beauty. Of, I think of Valerie, of, of everything you brought in, yeah. speaking about Sukkot and uh, and how to bring God into our lives so that we can cope with the good and the bad every day, and, and somehow still feel okay. Like we can get through this. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and maybe contentment is is a word. It's interesting, there's lots of different words in, in, in Biblical Hebrew for 
joy and contentment and and yeah. yeah. Nahama, you were gonna say something? Yeah. There's a lot of words. Yes. Um, another thing is like also that we're taking this time. Everything that we're doing is one. I don't believe that you guys said this, but the thing that that is a challenge is we have to somehow find a way to take all of this joy and and spiritualness into the year because once the holiday season, we kind of hit that. Yeah. Where it's quiet and dark, it gets darker. The winter is cold. It's yeah. So can I throw that out as a question? Yeah. Any any ideas for how we take the these ideas into the year with us? Because I think that's a great point. It I is keep... a good, yeah. <laughs> we bring that up every year, Mother. Yeah. Well, it's, it's how do you take the everything you learn, everything you gain from the holiday season and take it into the year? Well, part of it is you have to remember that God is still with you. And you can always connect to God. And know that God is watching over you and you still have to do your best. Yeah. And does anyone have any ideas? I think you could do it at other times of the year, like parts of the long form in the back of this mantra, because it, you know, there's a bracha to be right with everybody before you go to sleep at night, so maybe I'm not so awesome with that every day. Um, but I need to catch up, like once a year, not enough for me. But I like the long form because it's very specific. And so it makes me realize things that maybe I hadn't even been thinking. Like I did an action sort of in a way that I didn't even think of, could maybe not have been the greatest thing. Um, but it, it's not it's not in a negative way. Like it gives me ideas of how to be better. Beautiful. And um, I've got someone here who says, admission that we are not perfect and our free will has a purpose. Beautiful. Um, Wait, say that again. New year, fresh start, admission that we are not perfect and our free will has a purpose. And I just also want to share with you, um, there's this idea that, I think we may have discussed it in other classes, but I'll just briefly, that every time of year has an energy. and But the year is not a cycle, it's not, it not a circle. It's a spiral, meaning that this energy of the year, we're now heading into this energy of joy, right? Joy that comes from understanding that we can live a life of meaning. And we're going to leave that energy soon. And we, the next part of the energy that comes up is, is Mar Cheshman, which is a much harder e e energy. And I think what we do is we carry a little bit of that energy forward, but we're going to come back to it next year. But when we come back to it next year, we don't come back to it as a circle, we come back to it as a, as a spiral, which means we're tapping into that energy, but from a little bit of a higher place. And there is so much of a different energy, and we're supposed to get a little bit of that energy, so it's normal for it to be, yes, now I'm tapped into this energy and it's fantastic, and now, you know, in a few months' time, I'm not going to be so tapped into that energy, because. but hopefully we'll have a little bit of that and i think by continuing to learn and do it and by the way this wednesday evening we're doing a, a meal in the sukkah um here at the jewish experience so if you'd like to join us come join us because it's an awesome opportunity to um spend time in the sukkah yes Lisa. just a question something sure. that's bothering me yes um, please i am in control is what you said but i feel like maybe you're in control of your emotions and how you react to situations but to me god's in control you can yes. do everything you want, but he's gonna, he can change that. He can do mm -hmm. all that. So why do you say I'm in control? Well, you're, 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 you raise a good point, and you're right. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea there is that we have more control than, 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 than we often give ourselves credit to, right? Which means that even... And, and I'm hesitating a little bit because it's a much, much bigger concept than, than a two-minute... And it's, um, it's, it means that we have, a, you know, for example, the, the time will tell stories, right, of um, wh wh times where there were droughts. And there was a, 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 a rabbi called Choni Hamagel. What did he do is he drew a circle and he stood in the circle and, he, and he, he said to God, I'm not leaving the circle until the rain starts to come. 
right? <laughs> and then the rain started to come, but it was like a very like a, a, a drizzle. And he's like, uh-uh, that, this is this is not the rain that I'm I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. And then the rain like came down and it was too heavy and got, and he went back in the circle. And what what's the point of the story? The point, obviously, he was he had a direct line to God, right? We can't do that. We can't turn <laughs> into it. Yet there are things that we can do. Prayer has an impact. Mm-hmm. The actions that we take have an impact. The cho- we have a choice of how much we let God into our life. Does that mean that we're always going to get the results that we want? No, absolutely not. Yet we have to understand that we're not, it's, not, it's not just a brownie point system that God tells us, if you do X, Y, Z, then I'm going to give you a brownie, right? It's a system whereby prayer, for example, actually changes things. There's a fascinating medical research where they studied Right, people who were prayed for and people who were not prayed for, and it was a double blind control study, which means that the people who were prayed for didn't know they were being prayed for necessarily, and the people who were prayed for, generally, as you know, statistically did better, right? Which goes to show us it's an incredible study, but it, which goes to show us that these things actually make a difference. So we have more control than we than we think we do, and you're right. At the end of the day, God is going to give us what's good for us. And sometimes what's good for us isn't what feels good in the moment, yeah. right? Throw, God throws us, us into a situation and we're like, hold on a second. This isn't what I wanted. A hundred percent. But maybe it's good for us. Right. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah. And I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought it up because it's, it was an important point to, to mm-hmm. things. I feel like we, we still have to do our parts. Yeah, we do have to do our part. Yeah, yeah like we co-create. Like, yes, yes. Like, God runs the world, but by my thoughts and my actions and my choices, I, I can get, I mean, a lot of different things can happen. It's not like it's all preordained and God knows this is your life, this is what your life's going to look like. Can I go on? So I can ask God, you know, like, there's this professional thing that I, I don't want to work much, but it was very interesting to me, a project, and I was really pushing to get this project and there were just some roadblocks and I just said Hashem let me know what you want from me because I thought that was really it you know like my next meaningful challenge and so I'm just waiting now to hear what's next Mm -hmm. and And then I'll take my whatever action feels appropriate you know yeah and and what I should have written there is I have more control. So I've, I've next edition is is going to say I have more control. <laughs> yes, thank you. Because it I, it's. I don't think so. I was just going to add another thing with that. Yes. Also on Sukkot we read um a book called Kohelas, and it talks about going through like slides that was written by Solomon Hamela, King Solomon. Um. We talk about the different seasons, and we also have to remember there's a time for different things and there's a season for different things, but that's also that plays a role. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. If anyone has any questions on Instagram, you can always message me later.